Hey guys, welcome to our newest channel, TFL EV, and today we're gonna to be reviewing that, the new Mustang Mach-E. And in this video, we're gonna do a bunch of things. We're gonna take it for a ride, find out how quick it is from zero to 60, check out the tech, see how well it rides, and of course, at the end of the video, we're gonna let you know whether you should buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. But as part of our buddy review, I need a buddy. And the buddy is here. Thank you, Nathan, I appreciate it. Uh, so let's talk about the name, Ford Mustang Mach-E. I'm getting kind of over the fact that these manufacturers taking brands and cars that were symbolic of one thing and turning into something else. What I mean by that is, of course, the Porsche Taycan Turbo. Yeah. There's no turbo in it, right? The Chevy Blazer, which is now turned into this kind of, you know, shopping, going, crossover. As what about to that Ford Bronco? I mean, come on. <laughs> uh -huh. See what I did? I see what you did. This is a GT, by the way. So the GT version is the performance version, but not the very top so, so, performance. So, so let me ask you this. Yeah. When it's actually time to build an electric Mustang, mm -hmm. you know, what are they going to call it? Like a Mustang, you know how they have the GT500, GT350? Are they going to do Mustang GTE? That doesn't work. So instead of Super Snake or something like that, electric eel. All right. You're welcome, Ford. <laughs> there you go, Ford. If you do use, use the electric eel, send your uh, checks courtesy of Nathan Adlin. To Apparently TFL. we get paid by all the automakers yes. when we review their cars. Yes. So the thing about this vehicle is that um, if they just called it the Ford Mach-E yeah. or the Mach-E Dusat, I wouldn't care. But calling it a Mustang, I still have a problem with it. Some of you guys don't. And it has a pony in the front. And there's a pony like in somewhere else, like on the wheels and stuff. But otherwise, there's nothing about it that's really a Mustang, right? It looks more like a Ford Fusion to me. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because I always thought the Ford Fusion was a good looking car. But we should talk about a couple of the changes for 2022, and there's just a couple. And then maybe uh, do a little walk around. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. You know, one of the things they did was they created these like sequential turn signals. Let me show you. Yeah. Yeah, so let me show you what that looks like. And of course, it's got this unique. Well, oh, so, yeah. Yeah, we just push the button and it opens up. But let me show you the turn signal, Nathan. Check this out. How about them apples? Yeah, and Ford has been doing that since the 60s. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, at least in the rear. Okay, so let's look at the front. I think it's 5.7 cubic feet or something like that. Um, so there's actually been a couple changes here. You know what they used to do to prevent people from getting in here? Was they had a divider in the previous model that sat in here, right? So now Jill could fit in here. Uh, yeah, yeah, she could. I could probably try to get my big butt in here. I'm kidding. Um, so the, uh, this trunk release thing works, and over the uh, update for the 2021 will allow this one to work as well. So you are able to use this. Not all EVs have a frunk or a front trunk. By the way, Ford doesn't use frunk, legally speaking, because that's someone else's name. I like this can holder. They well, yeah, into the plastic. this is cool because you could sit there, walk, look at the sunset, put uh, your... your oh, look, there's a little drain. And what Ford did, which was really clever, is that they kind of squared off the edges here so you can get a pretty good sized suitcase in here and close the, uh, tr uh, the front Frunk. hood trunky thingy. Frunk. Frunk. Frunk, dude, it's a frunk. Look at that. Do you like the look of this thing? You know, the most interesting thing I think that Ford did on this vehicle was this, right? So they kind of fool you into thinking it's a fastback because you've got this kind of line that goes down that's body colored yeah but, yet, but really there's the roof so it's really i mean if this was the same body color you'd be like heck that's a crossover but now it looks like it's a fastback oh i like the coke bottle design i like the big fenders and everything else once again take the name aside i'm going to throw the name out and as a good looking vehicle it is indeed however because it still does slope back and this is actually a very tight car and you'll see this later on when roman and i are driving it it's also a very low car in its class it's one of the lowest to the ground it is and i have it written down here yeah <laughs> It is way under six inches, 5.7 inches. Let me, show, let me show you, this is kind of cool, right? These little buttons. And of course, Tesla has decided to reinvent the way we open cars, so now everybody has to do it. There's like a little pole that pushes out so that it opens up on its own. Could I we think, just have a door handle? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. It you would know, be it's easier be more, and cheaper. It's supposed to be more aerodynamic. Now you got this kind of funky little like grab handle here. To me, that just is hokey, right? It's not cool, it's not fun, it's just hokey. You know, I mean, this works. Yeah. This is just why. Yeah, well, because we're old men, and apparently... No, we're not old men. We are old men, no. but it, the, the seat, look... It, the, it's the, just, look, reinventing the wheel, right? I, I agree. Why? Making it more complex. There's no reason for why? that. Why? Yeah, just, it's technology for the sake of tech. All right, and then let's open up the back, show how much room there is. Of course, it has to be electric. 
Now the good news here is that there's actually pretty good utility. It's less than, if you guys were into the, it, the Ford Escape, as an example, this is a little bit less than that. 29.7 uh, cubic feet of cargo space back here. Now, by the way, there is more available down here if you were to remove this and you can, you'll see there's more space here. And a space saver. Spare tire. There's no tire. No. Oh, what's no, this? No, no. oh, this is just a charger. Just a charger. Yeah. That's, also, that. that's just basically all you have is a little inflator. Right, right, right. It's, so it's not even, it's not run flats, uh, inflator, which, and take it or leave it, you know. Um, but if you fold these down, according to this, 59.7 cubic feet of cargo space, that's not too bad, but it is under the Volkswagen. It is way less than the Model Y, which it competes directly against. Now, I can't help but notice some things like right here. You, you see this look uh, like plastic cut line, right? That just to me looks cheap. Like like you couldn't, oh, they the, couldn't the, make it out of one piece, but they had to make it out of two for some the, reason. No, this is tactical. There's a really good reason for that. In case you have thumb hair, it'll get caught in there. <laughs> you yank it right off. That to me feels like just cost cutting. Yeah, I, well, you know, and they are trying to make this inexpensive in some way so you can afford it. Because, well, how much is it? You got the Monroni there. Yeah, I do. Uh, so before I read the price, bear in mind, the base model, which is rear drive, yep. is around 44, which isn't too bad. This is the all wheel drive. This is the all-wheel drive GT, yeah. and it's basically $64,000. So it, of course, competes with cars like uh, the Tesla Model Y, which we've had, uh, the Volkswagen ID4, yeah. right? There are is now this slew of electric crossovers, the EV6 from Kia, uh, the Hyundai Ioniq, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so let me get in the back seat and see how much room is back there, okay? Yeah, better you than me. I mean, right. go ahead. I'm gonna sit behind myself, and keep in mind I'm 6'2", so I'm a good test because, you know, and you have a full head of hair, so if your hair's, yeah. I'm having a bad hair day, Nathan, so. At least you're having a hair day. So I don't have that. It's galloped here, so there is room, but I would say, look, I am looking directly into. Uh, yeah, you have to duck down a lot to get in. Yeah, it's, it's right? kind of dark back here, and it's a little claustrophobic, if I'm being honest. Um, some might call it sporty. Uh, I would call it a little claustrophobic. So it's, it's, it's not grand, dude, uh, in terms of space in the back. I would say that if I were someone with a family, yeah. with little kids, and I wanted three across seating, I would get probably something else. All right. Before we uh, act sporty. actually take it for a ride, let's talk about the charging. Uh, okay. We have, of course, uh, fast charging. So yeah. level two and level three. You said it's about a hundred kilowatt hour battery. Ninety nine point eight kilowatt hour battery. But bear in mind, you, oh, you normally you don't get the maximum amount, right? Well, this is actually more than last year, so you get a maximum of ninety one kilowatt hours of usable battery space, which is pretty good. Last year it was in the eighties. And according to Alex, our friend on autos, yeah. Uh, a max charge rate of 170 kilowatts, which is okay. You can you can go to 170, but it'll drop down. Uh, you could, and it's possible you could even go higher. The point is, is that once you get to about 80 percent, it will slow yeah, down. Yeah, I know they but all do Ford that. But Ford says less this year than the previous year, so you still should be able to shove some juice in there. Look, all those numbers to me are so squishy because it really depends on two factors, right? Mm. And you never know which one is controlling it. What the charging station can put in and what the car is requesting. And inevitably, between those two, the manufacturer always says, oh, it's got a charge rate of 250 kilowatts and you show up and it like starts sucking juice at like 83 kilowatts. Yeah. And then people are doing all these charge curves and you know, all these testing. You know what? The problem with that is you go to the gas station, you stick the nozzle in and you've got, you know, 30 seconds. Right, of, and, of, you're, and you're done, and you're or, done. or yeah. five minutes yeah. even, you know. Yeah. And here, you know, it could be anywhere from a half hour to an hour and a half depending. And that just is so confusing. I think that's putting a lot of people off actually. It is, your cars. but what you can do is a vehicle like this when it has almost zero is that you can get about 80% in it pretty quickly. It it's, depends on the charger. It depends it, on the state of charge. It depends on the temperature of the battery. It depends on so many factors. I've been to chargers where, you know, you plug one in and you're getting like 50 kilowatts. You plug another one in and you're getting 70. You plug another one in and you're getting, and there's even signs. I've seen sticky notes like use this one. Yeah. So, so guys, it, it's, it's right now, it's the wild west of charging. All those numbers are very squishy. I know there's people out there doing very precise charging tests. I don't care. It's still a pain in the ass compared to an ice car. Shall we go inside and go for a ride? That yes. was my rant, Nathan. Okay, there's your rant. Let's let's go inside and have a look. All right. I have to crane my neck just a little bit to get I, in. I do too. Okay, it's not just me. Um, so now that I've done my rant, could I give you the good news? Give me the good news. The good news is that if you're charging at home on level two, you know, we had now a Model 3, a Model 
X and a Model Y that you know I charge at home, mm -hmm. and 100 kilowatts you can charge up overnight. Oh, easily. You, you never have to deal with public charging, and it becomes actually very useful. So uh, while public charging isn't grand, home charging is grand, uh, and that's the good news for an electric car. Yeah, well, I, I charge my electric car on 110 almost all the time at home, and every night, even if it's almost completely empty, Usually by the time I want to drive it, it's nearly full. So what do you think of this? No. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of over this. It, you know what the problem is? Uh, Roman and I off camera had a really hard time dealing with the um, heating air conditioning system, just making it recirculate. And it turns out you have to, there it is. It took us like 10 minutes to find to out. Find this. Yeah, to find out the re where it, you can hit the button to make mm -hmm. it recirculate. Okay. It's, it's not grand. Whereas in, if you had a bunch of buttons, it'd just be right there. And, and the other thing is, while well, we're sitting here, it's easy, right? Yeah. But when you're moving, you're like, oh, it's always, it's always like, it's not a stationary vehicle. Why are you making it harder to push that? And it's not just Ford either. Almost everybody's going to screen. Some do it better than others. I think Ford's right in the middle. I do like the display in front of you, though. Yeah, it's nice to have this little secondary display. And yeah. Look, this looks familiar. How this yeah, up. this is right out of um, almost all Ford vehicles right now that are front wheel drive. So the, um, what you call it, the Ford Maverick that we have, both of them, have the same dial uh, thing. As much as I don't like dials, I like the fact they're sharing this because you can hop out of one vehicle and get into another and not have to get used to different buttons and everything else. This is a good idea. I do like this material here. It's kind That's of cool. um, bronzy, which is also very nice. Uh, uh, you know, it's got kind of this very uh, youthful, utilitarian, and yet uh, sexy vibe going on in here. Right. By the way, the seats, don't they feel familiar? They to feel, me, they feel familiar. They feel mavericky in some yes, ways. Yes, they do. I think there's a lot of components they share, which makes sense because that kind of keeps the overhead low, right? You know, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I say, you know, we're two big guys, but we're pretty tight. Yeah. I, I would say, I mean, maybe we're used to driving trucks. I don't know. You yeah, can, we are that's used a, to driving trucks. That's a fair <laughs> criticism, but it's kind of tight in here. Yeah, we would hit elbows if we were doing performance driving and sitting next to each other. That's for damn sure. Um, the other thing I do like in this vehicle uh, is the choice of materials. I think, you know, there's no place in here where you touch where it feels like cost cutting. Like I pointed on the back, that little handle, but everything you see and feel up front here. Up here is yeah. pretty damn good. Yeah, and it feels uh, really good. It's, it's impressive. I like the vent location, by the way, and I like this too, this, this thing. It's not fake carbon fiber, which I hate. This is a nice little metal thing, a mesh, which is pretty cool. Now, I, I don't know if this is important to people. I'm sh sure it is. Uh, but, you know, this is manufactured in Mexico. So, uh, you know, it's uh, a thing we put out there. All the cars now are manufactured globally. So it's not like this is the only car that's doing it and truck. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, some people care about it. Yeah, some people do. I don't, but uh, some people do. By the way, I just can't stand seeing chill even up there. Sorry. Sorry so, okay. you know, I can't ex <laughs> just handle that. Uh, so there's a lot of things. This screen is really important. But before we get to the screen, let's talk about it zero to 60 times yeah. with three adults, two of which are large. So Ford says what, like 3.8 seconds? That's at, at its best. We're not even in that setting. We're in the, the soft setting, which well, is not a silent. Fast setting. Hold okay, on. Okay, so unbridled. 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 There we go. We're unbridled. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Here we go. Oh, tunnel vision. Wow, this thing really moves. Wow, 4.71. Then that's with three people in there. Yeah. By the way, that was augmented sound that's fed in here, which I... I <laughs> what was that? No, 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 it's propulsion sound. I have that here. Okay. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. It sounded like you were hear burp that? It sounded like you were burping. That's not burping. Come on. Out. Hear that? <laughs> that's, the, that's the propulsion sound. Uh, uh, that's what I assume a yak sounds like <laughs> growling at somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. Okay. I like I like having some sort of sound as right. feedback. Okay. Let's, let's go to Whisper and we'll we'll see how loud it really is, okay? Oh, there it goes. That's the other thing is mm. So about 64, 65 decimals, which isn't actually all that quiet. It, it's it's mean for an electric vehicle it's a little loud. One of the reasons why? Can you hear that? Tire noise. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, we're rolling on 20-inch uh, wheels, Nathan. Yeah, and performance tires, you know, and it makes sense. It's a performance car. It's one of the reasons why it's so low to the ground and the suspension is so tight because even in whisper mode, which sort of is your mellow mode, things get very, very bumpy. All right, so here's our rough road, Nathan. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna try to hit the potholes on purpose and see just how bad or good this is, okay? Okay. We're gonna rate the Wheeler Girls dancing from one to 10. You gotta let her dance. I think your fingers are keeping her skirt. There you go, perfect. 
So one is not dancing much, ten is dancing a lot. Um, and she's not dancing much, but... Mm, uh, I don't know, it's got some of these bumps, she's dancing a lot. Yeah? Yeah. So I'd say we're probably at like, oh, uh, I don't know, a three maybe? Right, really? here, come, here come some bigger bumps, here okay. we go. Yeah, see? And I'm feeling that. Yeah. Like under my butt, I'm feeling that. So she's dancing a lot. Yeah, this, um, this car does have a pretty harsh ride. It doesn't yeah. feel like it's... Uh, very well uh, softened. You know well, I mean? you know, and some people would argue that this car has, what you call it, you know, a sport tune, and it does. Yeah. It's built for sport. However, other vehicles that are sporty in this class seem to have a better ride. The Model Y that we had for a while, that we owned, I felt had a better ride. I felt it was pretty crap as well. It wasn't great, yeah. but I think it was slightly better than this, which is saying something. All right, so we've got 66% battery. It says range 133 miles. That's what's, impressive. What's the uh, full range when it's fully charged? Uh, 270 miles, but let me double check. Of course, that depends on how cool. and, and it depends on so many things. Yeah. And, and that was uh, recently updated because their former model uh, did not have that type of range. Well, I'm gonna while, while, you're looking, while you're looking for your notes, I'm going to hit the uh, button here and see if it can find its way to Snarfs, okay? Yes. Navigate to Snarfs. Which item would you like? Yeah, I found That's it. Look at bad. that. Yeah, I found it. I found all of them. Yeah. So congratulations, Ford. You got it. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty impressed. Now, by the way, uh, Blue Cruise yeah. is available for this model. And then the previous model, uh, it, they say that there'll be coming a uh, over-the-air update. In fact, a lot of the components on this vehicle... Sorry, I just, Sorry sweetheart. I turned, I turned it off. <laughs> turned off. She's still talking. Cancel. Okay, see, I there thought you, you could cancel the button, but you can't. No, no, it's I just... And, I, it, you know, you guys are going to say, well, you know, once you get used to it, it'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I know, but there's certain things that you're like, why a black car instead of a white car? The white car would be easier to see on a black screen. Just stuff like that would be easier. I love when they like here it's same thing. I love when they actually take the time to match the color of the car. That would be to the color of the display exactly. car. Exactly. Uh, and that's not hard to do, right? That's just software. By the way, uh, if you guys are curious, the screen that's in front of Roman is showing lane departure. So if he gets close to a lane, you're going to see uh, like uh, a yeah, little yellow guys, warning. So these guys turn green when it knows where the lanes are, and mm. then if I cross over one, they turn orange or reddish. Right. I actually kind of like that. It's a pretty. It, it, that is pretty intuitive. This is, there's so much give and take in this car, you know what I mean? Yeah, so like I like the heated seats, they work yeah. really well. The heated steering wheel works really well. Yep. I love the fact that we have a giant knob for the that, volume. Which is great. Kudos. And we get Ford. on off right there in the middle. Yeah, this is kind of hokey. You got to kind of slide it up and down. It kind of works, but you know, once again, uh, boom, 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 boom would be so much easier. Buttons like, would be better. Like here's like where I got lost. So let me go back. Okay, let me kill that. Let me close that. Uh, I want to go to music. So where's my music? Go to music, Nathan. Uh, uh, music? Yeah, go to music. Uh, you have to go to here, right? And then your selection, then you can go to like to radio. Yeah, go to radio. Okay. Now, here's a little test for you, okay? Let's say that uh, you like uh, chill, right? Um, so uh, you got to go this way, right? You're on Ozzy's Boneyard. That's yours. Okay, let's say you like Hair Nation. Yeah. How do you make that a favorite? You hold it down. So here, go 93.1. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Saved. Oh, nice. Good. Congratulations. Uh, usually it's there's the like only a, thing I researched. <laughs> usually there's a little heart, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It, it depends on the car. And they're all different, which I wish they would do a uniform thing, but that's neither here nor there. The good news is, is that this works, but it, it's, it doesn't track well. Maybe I don't have enough iron in my finger. Who knows? But see, it's a little uh, grumpy about that. And then changing the stations... You can swipe, but once again, it's a little grumpy. You see how it doesn't go... I mean, I mean, it would be so much easier just to a dial. a dial. Because let's say you want to go to, I don't know, one of the news stations, and those are like over 100, right? Look right. how long it's taken me to go there. I'm sure you can do a manual like input, but still, this, you know, when you're, and we're not even driving. And, and look. Right. Look, not so so I got to go this. I got to do that. Now. Right. Here's an example. So you could do this. Uh, for instance, I listen to the BBC, so 120... There it is. You can do that, but driving and doing that sucks. Yeah, and that's kind of the point. Yeah. I so, their their IP, their the whole system here, is workable, but I think it could be better. How about that? All right. Well, now that we're heading back, uh, let's uh, think about whether we should give it a buy it, a lease it, a rent it, or a forget it. All right, Nathan, on the TFL scale of buy, lease, and rent it, or forget it, 
what do you give the Ford Mustang Mach-E? Almost to buy it because it's so much fun to drive. It is a hoot, but I decided to give it a rent it. Wow. I'm kidding, a lease it. Okay. No, I, <laughs> no, I'm going to give it a lease it. And the reason why is because as much fun as it is to drive, it is still pretty pricey and the ride is just really harsh and this infotainment system needs work. Yeah, I think lease it as well. You know, why buy yesterday's tech? You know that batteries are going to get better with a caveat and that is cars are impossible to find right now. So maybe we're, you know, a couple of years out from actually the next generation of electric cars. Uh, so yeah, you know, if you guys like Mustangs, uh, and you want an electric one, wait for the electric one. But if you want a pretty good crossover for you and your family, I'd say lease it. Fair enough, guys. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Ciao.